a meteor again with character animation tutorial and after effects. So at this point you should have everything about your character animated in that full loop cycle. And what I want you to do is take your time slider to the very end of that cycle. Underneath the footage you'll find a time signature if you click that. So just go to time and command C to copy. We're going to go into that pre-flight menu of our walking character composition and change the duration to that new time signature. So when you go back into your main composition or your original composition, you should find that your character will walk in one full cycle within the scene and then disappear. That's exactly what we want because now we're going to do something called time remapping. So we are going to create or make this composition piece the same length as our animation again by going to layer time and we're going to enable time remapping. So the way the time remappers work is it's put two keyframes indicating the beginning and the end of our original um, composition and taken the composition to the end. If yours for any reason hasn't taken this bar to the end, you can drag it along as long as the keyframes stay in place. Um, sometimes when putting this together, so it has happened to me this time, your last keyframe is going to be blank. It's the way that um, After Effects counts frames. And, um, so you just want to change the time signature of the last keyframe to be one second or one millisecond, I should say, before the previous end frame. So if mine was one second and 23 milliseconds, so I've changed it to one second by 22 by touching that keyframe, touching this value here and changing the value manually. So this is the third and only other time you might find yourself touching um, in fact, have I made a mistake here? No, brilliant. Um, so this is the third and only time that you will, only other time you'll be touching the stopwatch. So in that first video with basic keyframing, I said that um, the first time you touch your stopwatch is start to activate and deactivate any kind of transform. However, this time we're going to touch it but hold it while holding alt which is going to bring up some javascript for us or some pre-written scripts from um, after effects and we're going to pick up the expression language menu and we're going to pick up property and within property we should find loop out duration so if you select loop out duration if you had a number of cycles you wanted specifically you could put them in here. However, I don't know how many cycles this is going to take, so I'm just going to click out of the box and I can see that scripted language at the bottom. And when I press play, it might just take a moment to render. However, as it surpasses that second keyframe, my character should now stay there. Nice. So What's glitching out at the end here? Oh, I guess it, yeah, it finishes mid-cycle, okay. That's fine. So, then I am going to close the time remap off and I'm going to take my character off of the set. And then to get my character to walk across the scene, sorry, I'm just noticing I have some layer issues. There we go. Um, what was I saying? So, to get the character walk across the scene now, because we've so far been walking it um, in a stationary position, I'm actually going to open up the transform menu of character walking composition, so I can treat this as its own layer that I can animate. And I'm going to hit the stopwatch of the position, just double checking my timeline, is at the beginning 
of that timeline, take the timeline all the way, or time slider all the way to the other end, pick up my character and walk it across the entire set. So unlike the parallax where the camera or the person, um, the viewer was moving, this time the character is moving, so I'm going to keep the scene in place to animate the character walking across. So that's a really simple, just straight line across. I am going to show you um, slightly more complex motion paths as well. So there we go. So that was one simple, easy way of animating him walk across. However, we have taken the time to look at how he steps. So, in fact, I might just begin this on screen and I'll take the whole thing off after. So he begins on his highest step. And as he moves that foot forward and places the next one on the ground, there we go, that's when I'm going to move him forwards. And between those two keyframes, remember briefly we looked at the bezier handles of a motion path, I'm just going to lift those to bring an arced upward motion. Now that might have been a bit too much especially because he sort of would have already began in the upwards motion because that leg's already down. So, lovely. And then that leg gets here. So, just going to pick up that handle too. Now, you might have noticed this keyframe does not have a handle. When so, After Effects is presetted to think um, that you don't always want to have those Bezier handles. So we need to refine them by right clicking and we want to go and look at our keyframe interpolation. So here it says everything is linear. Remember those Bezier curves are what turn things um, into non-linear objects so they have curvatures to them. So I just want to drop both these down and I want auto Bezier or continuous Beziers on. It's the spatial interpolation that I'm changing. So there we go, I've got my little handles back. Can I move the keyframe to the next one? And move the next step. Hopefully, there we go, I still have one there, and what about here? It's a circle, so I'm going to say I do, I just can't see it. So now I can add a little bounce to the walk, too. Um, so that's motion paths, and taking motion paths one step further. So got a bouncing little path. Let's go in further forward. Now it looks like those circles might just be slightly 
hidden behind that square. I don't know, let's check. Yes, aha, no, because we want continuous bezier or an auto bezier. There we go, now we've got it. We want the same on our last one. So once you've got the bouncing motion of your walk resolved, we're going to look at exporting. Um, so for exporting, we're going to use Adobe Media Encoder. So you might want to get that downloaded. And then um, there is a short video about exporting using exactly that. But I can now take this character walk cycle and have him walk through any scene that I build for him. Just remember when you export this or save this project to keep it with the Photoshop file. The two files are linked together. Oh, actually, in fact, just before I go, I completely forgot I had a butterfly that I wanted to add to my Um, to my animation and I wanted to put a blending mode on it I just want to show that they were available to us I'm just right clicking going to effect ah um, sorry not effect going to blending mode I think I want something like a divide on it let's bring the character in and just place the butterfly to fit in the cage And I'm going to want to parent the butterfly to the character so it follows. In fact, there's going to be a few moments I might need to animate its position as well. Um, so I need to do a time remap on the butterfly, as you can see. So that was layer time enable time remapping. Just check. Oh, I can't check I've got that last keyframe, but we'll find out soon enough. So this is what I meant about if for any reason your composition didn't stretch out to the end, that's fine. You can just drag it to the end yourself. And then it's a alt click to get my expression language menu up. And I'm just going to pick loop out duration. Super! So now I just need to get the positioning of my butterfly animated slightly so she stays within the confines of her cage. So might as well start the animating off there because it's the only Time we begin to see a butterfly. So does that follow nice and smoothly? Yep. Get that to follow relatively smoothly. <laughs> I kind of gave up at the end there. Great. So that's a walk cycle and how to loop smaller animations or compositions um, into larger animations. I hope you found that useful and for the export methods look at the video that's already up. Super, thank you.